Hello, you've caught me reading a Judge Dredd graphic novel because I needed something to read for this opening skit and it was literally the only thing we could find in the office that wasn't a video game art book. But I'm really enjoying it, I can't wait to find out what happens at the end. Wait, I could just skip to the end right now. No, don't do that, you'll ruin it. Oh, I just can't help it though. Oh, there, there it is, there's the end. Oh, well, I've done that now. Just couldn't help myself. Uh, okay, you can cut out the echoey voice filter. This is regular VO now, cheers. I mean, I do this many times, and in video games too, you know. Sometimes there'll be a thing you really want to do that you know will ruin the story, but it's so hard to resist. Oh, the irresistible lure of sweet, sugary temptation. That fiery battle that rages between what's fun for five minutes right now and what's better in the long term. It's a conflict that permeates every aspect of our lives, especially video games where you'll often find yourself doing things that might seem like a good idea at the time, but that have a detrimental effect on your enjoyment further down the line. And most of the time we know it too, but the temptation to do that bad but quite fun thing is so strong, damn it. Here are seven ways we completely ruined games for ourselves, even though we should have known better. Let us know in the comments if you're guilty of any of these. Honestly, what is wrong with us? First up, reading hidden trophies. Now, looking through the trophy list is important for many people, myself included, when you boot up a game for the first time, because you need to make an informed decision about whether or not you're going for the platinum, don't you? Back in the olden days of a few years ago, you'd always run the risk of seeing spoilers in trophy names or descriptions until hidden trophies were brought in that prevented you from seeing sensitive story information unless you explicitly pressed square to reveal it. Perfect! You'd still be able to check all the trophies for difficulty modes and collectibles and so on, safe in the knowledge that you'll unlock all the hidden trophies anyway during your natural progress through the story. But if you're anything like me, there is simply no getting past this screen without pressing square. Seriously, I don't think I've ever done it. I checked the trophies for Kingdom Hearts 3 when I first got my hands on it, a game for which I'd been waiting over a decade and just... I'm gonna reveal it by the way, so minor spoilers for Kingdom Hearts 3. Ah, uh, why? Why would I look at that? Damn, what is wrong with me? Honestly, am I just weird? Does anybody else feel compelled to do this too, even when you know you don't want to know what the details of the hidden trophy are? Because honestly, the amount of story spoilers I've given myself by revealing hidden trophy information is just ridiculous. It's a similar compulsion to when you're in a room in Skyrim and you can't leave until you've read every book on every shelf and stuffed every fruit bowl into your already bursting inventory. Stupid me. I just can't help myself. Please tell me I'm not the only one. Next up is a thing I always do just because I have a fascination with chaos, I think. Like there's a disturbing will I always have to combat that wants to see what would happen if I went and did the thing I knew was a bad thing. In this instance, murdering really important NPCs in games that don't bring them back afterwards. Shopkeepers in Skyrim. They're extinct in my game, I think. I know the game isn't going to magically respawn shopkeepers to take their place. I know I'm not going to be able to trade in these shops ever again. But it's that knowledge that makes me just, oh, I don't know, I have a problem. Like, have you ever been on a train, standing in the vestibule, for example, and all of a sudden, just felt an overwhelming urge to chuck your phone out the window. Basically, there's a chaotic idiot living inside my brain, and sometimes he wins. Like when I attempted Dark Souls all those years ago and ended up having a go at those helpful NPCs around the first bonfire because, you know, I can't help myself, and it turns out they're both A, really strong, and B, remember you attacked them even after you've respawned, turning what should have been a safe, gentle tutorial area into absolute hell. Eventually I tricked them both into jumping off a cliff and dying, ha ha ha, I win. But then I was told later they're pretty important characters actually, and that what I'd done was really stupid. Entry 3 is my absolute favourite thing to do in RPGs because, as long-time viewers will know, I hate a challenge. Over-leveling. Oh, I love it. 
For me, there is no better feeling than getting to a boss, having that long cutscene where the boss is all like, ha 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 ha, I'm really strong and scary, and this is going to be a really hard fight, and even your heroes are like, oh, you're really strong and scary, this is going to be a really hard fight. And then you get to it, and you win in like five seconds. Bish bash bosh, say hello to my sword that's seven times more powerful than the recommended level for this dungeon. But sometimes, these victories can feel hollow. Like, can you really claim to be any good at a game you've breezed through by guzzling EXP to the point of over-level obesity? Have I really experienced these games to their full potential? Have other gamers got more out of them because they've had the satisfaction of carefully strategizing their way to a hard-earned victory? Although, this one time, I was completely caught out by overleveling. I was playing Oblivion and, as usual, went off to do a million side quests before even attempting anything related to the story, partly so I could enjoy the game without Oblivion gates popping up all over the place, they only appear after you've done the battle at Kavach, but mostly because I wanted all the really hard fights against the Daedra to be a cakewalk. What I didn't realise was that in Oblivion, enemy levels scale to match yours. So when I eventually came to the Battle of Kavach and was level goodness knows what, instead of having a nice gentle introductory battle against low level Daedra, I was fighting absolute monsters. Now this is a big old set piece where you fight alongside a load of NPCs. Usually the NPCs are a great help in this battle, but because in my game they were going up against disproportionately tough opponents, they were getting slaughtered in two or three hits. Meaning this fight was basically me against all the Daedra. In the end I had to come back out and grind even more until I reached a point where I was so powerful I could just easily handle multiple Daedra at once. It was a good 35 to 40 hours until I completed that first story mission in Oblivion. It was by far the hardest one, all because I ruined the game for myself with compulsive over-leveling. I would say lesson learned, but here I am, over 10 years on, doing the exact same thing with every RPG I play, so yeah. Next up is one Dave is guilty of, not me, I'd never do this, and that is playing the sequel first. Honestly, who are you people? And what's worse, the sequel he played first was Metal Gear Solid 2 Sons of Liberty. For goodness sake, Dave, it's making me furious just thinking about you playing that before the first Metal Gear Solid, stumbling through it like, oh, what's that? And what's a Metal Gear? And a I mean, if you play a sequel before the original, you've essentially spoiled a bunch of major plot points for yourself for when you do eventually go back and play the first game. Also, you're robbing yourself of the full experience of the sequel. You know, you don't get the added emotional weight of having been on the full journey with your protagonist. There are story elements you won't appreciate, Easter eggs and in-jokes that will fly over your head. Essentially, you're lessening your potential enjoyment of both the original and the sequel by playing the sequel first. I can totally understand though, especially with games as glorious as Devil May Cry 5 out now. If you haven't played the others, that's a heavy time investment and you just want to crack on with that sublime 60 frames per second demon slaying, don't you? I get it, and you can totally play and enjoy Devil May Cry 5 without having played any of the others. You're just ruining it for yourself a little bit. Little bit. Entry 5 is a thing I do all the time, definitely way more so as an adult, and I hate that I do it, and wish I had better willpower, and that is shelving games halfway through without finishing them because a shiny new one has come out. Then, going back to the old game, realising you're about two thirds of the way through and have forgotten what's going on and all of the controls. There is nothing more likely to make me give up on a game, apart from coming up against a really hard boss, obviously, than if I come back to it after a six month gap and am suddenly rubbish at it all over again. This happened to me a lot last year. Dragon Quest XI came out, then Assassin's Creed Odyssey came out, then Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, then Kingdom Hearts 3 came out, then Devil May Cry 5 came out, now Sekiro is here and... Ah! I'm on average about 20 hours through all of those games, 
but haven't finished any of them, apart from Kingdom Hearts 3, which I did just about manage to finish last week. I plan on going back to Dragon Quest XI, back to Odyssey, back to Red Dead 2, but know that as soon as I do, I'm going to have to relearn how to play them all over again, and the thing is, it's difficult learning a game when you're at a point in the story designed to test the abilities of someone who knows what they're doing. Odyssey, for instance. I was stealthing my way through forts like a stabby ghost before Red Dead 2 came out. Now I feel like a toddler stumbling about in her mother's clothes. I've ruined Assassin's Creed Odyssey for myself because I just lack the willpower to see things through to their conclusion and am too easily tempted by new and shiny things. And I'm also fast coming to the realisation that my backlog of games is actually my graveyard of games. Entry 6 is the total opposite of Entry 5, but is equally both ruinous and hard to resist, and that is rushing through games when they first come out. Now, this is a problem I had mostly as a kid, but I'm still guilty of it now when something like a new Final Fantasy releases. I finished Final Fantasy XV in six days. Now, when you consider that at the time I'd been waiting six years for a single-player mainline Final Fantasy to come out, Finishing it in six days just seems kind of ridiculous. I absolutely caned Final Fantasy XV. I was just so hungry for it. Didn't take my time, didn't stop to enjoy the beauty or really appreciate any of the fine detail. Just bang, get the story done. Quick, 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 before someone spoils it on Twitter or something. I did the same thing with Final Fantasy IX. I was 13 when that came out and it was half term, so naturally I completed that one in four days. So much waiting. So much anticipation, so much excitement, and then whoosh! Like Christmas morning, it's here and gone in the blink of an eye, leaving you with a sort of enlivened emptiness, like emotional afterburn. All that excitement and energy unable to fade as quickly as the thing which ignited it in the first place. So I guess the optimum thing to do with new games you're excited about is take your time with them, but simultaneously get them finished before anything else comes out that you're excited about. The final way we always ruin games for ourselves, or at least used to, is when a new game comes out you're really excited for, but you can't buy it yet. Maybe you're waiting for payday, or your birthday, or for it to drop in price, but you're so excited that you just do what I did when I was a kid, and go round to your mate's house who does have the game and watch them play it instead. The modern version of this is of course watching someone play the game on YouTube, which is a brilliant thing to do actually, I think you should keep doing that, please. My mate Darren had two older brothers who spent all their money on games, so his house was always full of the latest releases. It was my favourite place to go, I literally watched him play all 50 hours of The Legend of Dragoon. I'd been looking forward to it for what felt like ages, but in the UK UK, it came out in January and my birthday wasn't until December, so I basically had to wait an entire year before my parents would buy it for me. And so it was off to Darren's house. So when my time finally came, some 11 months later, there were no surprises left for me. I'd experienced the highs and lows, the incredible CG cutscenes, the epic story twists and the amazing combat vicariously through Darren. I mean, there was no way I was waiting when I knew he had the game, and if I didn't go round his house to watch then he'd be telling me all about it in the playground instead and that would have been even worse. I don't really regret it and I always remember The Legend of Dragoon fondly as one of my favourite RPGs on PS1, but sometimes I do wonder, would I have loved it even more? had I experienced it for the first time myself. In summation, sometimes video games are just too exciting for their own good, but honestly, what is wrong with us? Why do we insist on ruining them for ourselves? Let us know in the comments if you're guilty of any of the things on this list, give us a like if you enjoyed the video, and hit the notification bell to make sure you know instantly when a new Friday feature goes live. Thanks for watching, and see you next week. For the players.